Good morning. We're going to talk a little bit about video. So if you're uh, looking for anything else, you're in the wrong class. <laughs> and I know that the little booklet you got says that I'm going to talk about um, how to do awesome video on your mobile device. We're not, but that's OK. Um, what we're going to talk about, you will definitely be able to use on your mobile device as well. Let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Pascal Dupool. I run a video and photo production company down here in Miami. And in the end of the day, what I do is produce mind-changing visual content. We're going to get into that a little bit more um, during the talk. Here's some of the companies that I work for. Just so you know, you know, I've done a video or two. And I have a, a tiny little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about sometimes. Uh, depends on who you ask. My daughter's here, so maybe she'll contradict that. But enough about me. Let's talk about video. According to Cisco, in 2019, 80% of online traffic is going to be video. So if you're not doing video, you are welcome to play in the 20% of the market, and I'm totally cool with that. Or you can decide to play in the four times that size market that will have video. Now I understand that includes Netflix and Hulu and all those guys too, but that's a pretty big market segment, if you ask me. So let's talk about how to shoot the video. The since we're at WordCamp, the perfect video is exactly like the perfect blog post. So if you write a blog or if you read a blog, if you know what a blog post looks like, you already can do a great video. A great video has to have a title. It has to have something that starts and grabs somebody's attention. Because if you start out boring, you're going to lose your audience. So we're going to talk about. How do you do that? How do you grab attention? Just like a great headline makes somebody click on your link and go into your blog post, the video has to have the same thing. The post uh, is basically the middle of the video. And I'm going to give you a little tiny glimpse of why video is great in engaging an audience. And then you have to have to have to have, like in a good blog post, a call to action. You want to have something happen. and well, you got to know where you want to end up before you start your video or write your blog post. So your title, how do you grab attention in three seconds? You know, you've all been there. You've seen the little Facebook video or YouTube video or something pop up. And if, if nothing happens in the first couple of seconds, what do you do? You know, hang around for five minutes, see if this gets any better? No. Interesting. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me pull this up somewhere else because there's supposed to be a video playing here, obviously. And it's not, and it's kind of important, so. Excuse me, WordCamp has asked us not to bring our own computers. This is the joy of some of that, so. Yes. Because they want us to save some time. So, you know what? I'm going to, I'm sorry. I'm going to get lost here otherwise. The visuals that you should have been seeing with this, <laughs> and my apologies again, but that's what happens when you walk in with somebody else's equipment. There's two pilots flying in a plane, and they're saying engine failure, engine failure, engine failure, and the plane starts coming down, and it looks like it's going to go crash. You're going to want to watch what happens because you care about these guys. When, you s when that's how your video starts, when that's how your story begins, your audience is going to be like, I want to figure out what happens. So you, you need to grab their attention and give them something to care about. And if you would have seen that video, you would have wanted to know what happens with those pilots. <laughs> The post, video is a multi-sensory way of storytelling. 
you experienced one of them, the audio side, which is actually a really important one. And of course, there's video. And if you can create a video that communicates with a good visual and with a good audio track, you now can take an idea and combine that with the power of visuals. You know that a photo is worth a thousand words, while well, video is 24 frames a second. So if you're doing you know, a bunch of photos, it's a lot of information you can get through. And here's the dirty little secret of video. Story trumps everything. I don't care if you're shooting on a $40,000 camera or if you're shooting on your iPhone. If you have a good story that you're telling, that you've grabbed the audience in and they're excited about figuring out what's going on, they don't care what it's shot on. Okay, so it's not little and it's not dirty and it's not a secret anymore either, but... Every story has three key ingredients. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Actually, Aristotle, I think, came up with that. It's like kind of, duh. But the beginning grabs their attention. That's your title. That's your hook. That's where you grab them, and that's where you keep your audience and say, hey, you know, you should be watching this. You should be paying attention to this. This is something that's really interesting. Here's the don'ts of beginning. Don't explain everything. Just explode right into the action. Don't set something up where it's like a long introduction and, okay, I'm going to, you know, no. You want to surprise your viewer so that he wants to see what's going on. So if you're doing a view YouTube video, please don't take the first minute and put up your logo and play the little theme music and have the stuff going because that's going to start looking like the same on all the videos you're doing and people don't know what you're doing. Start with your action and then cut to that. Then start your intro and go, hey, this is who I am, here's my branding, and tell your story. And don't waste my time, please. I don't want to sit there and watch something for five minutes. Set a quick pace, run through it, and Keep people focused, keep people there, keep people paying attention to what you're saying and what you're doing. The middle, the body, the story, that's really where video shines. Please have a hero. Please have somebody that the audience can identify with. And that doesn't have to be a person, that can be a product, that can be a service, that can be a guy or a girl. But please have somebody that the audience can identify with or care about and go, oh, that's what I want to learn about. We shot a video a couple years ago about a boat. Well, our hero is the boat. When you're done watching that six minute video, you're gonna say, I wanna buy that boat. And that's what I wanna do when I show that video or when I, when I give you that video. Kiss, keep it short. Stupid, excuse me. Please don't, video is great because you can condense so much information inside. I have clients that come to me and go, oh, we wanna do a 15 minute video. Who here is gonna spend 15 minutes online and watch a video? You know, unless it's an awesome piece and I really grab your attention and I have an amazing story to tell, stay under two minutes, keep it short. And please make it worth watching. Give me some eye candy, give me something that looks amazing, give me something where people are like, oh, that is so cool. And the end of the story, what's your end game? You almost have to start there and say, what do I want to do at the end of the day? What's the video supposed to be able to do? So the perfect video must tell a compelling story engineered to tell or to change your viewer's mind. And that can be, I need to buy that service, I want to use that product, I want to learn about this, I want to something. But there has to be a reason for that. I did a TED talk two years ago called The Art of Changing Minds. We're going to put the slides up online and the link is there if you want to watch it. It's another five minute talk. And then at the end, obviously, know your end game before the beginning. Start there with a good call to action. And video is powerful visually. So your call to actions don't have to be all crazy and huge and stuff. They can be subtle. And people are going to get it. We did a case study. We have a, a movie we shot in Afghanistan two years ago. Um, I showed a rough cut of that at a local university. And they did a pre and a post poll of the students. So this is where the, where the people start when we ask them, what do you think about Afghanistan before they watch the movie? And 15 minutes later, this is where they are. So in 15 minutes, we, we changed 100 minds, 180 degrees, just by telling a great story, getting a good call to action that surprised people in 15 minutes. So the perfect video is like the perfect blog post. Remember to grab their attention. Like a good blog title, your video, the first couple seconds are crucial to keep your audience. And secondly, the video has to tell a compelling story, like a good blog post. You want to keep your viewer. You don't want to just excite them and then give them something that makes no sense to them. 
And thirdly, the perfect video has an end game in mind that's specifically designed for a call to action. And if you can think about your video and say, how am I gonna change my viewer's mind at the end of the day, you're doing a great video. Here's some of my contact information. Thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate you ha being here. We have a little video booth set up downstairs. If you've noticed like the bright lights in the camera downstairs by the registration, we're actually offering you guys a free 20, 30 second video, whatever you want to do. If you want to do a shout out to your mom, if you want to do a little thing on your blog, we're going to in a couple days give you an embed code that you can put that video on your website, on your blog. Feel free to stop by. We're going to start after lunch. We're going to do it all day tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of WordCamp. Enjoy. See me downstairs if you have more questions about video. Have a great day.